Getting ready to buy or sell a home in 30, 60, or 90 days? Then check out BundleSelect.com to find out how you could save 20% or more on your entire transaction. Save on real estate, lending, and title. With BundleSelect.com, technology and a personal concierge are at your service to save you time and money. Bundle Select's hand-picked team of experts will compete for your business, so you'll save thousands of dollars by bundling all of these services. BundleSelect.com gives you all the control, including using your own realtor. I'm Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live, and I have been on the radio educating consumers for years. By bundling services like real estate, lending, and title, you could save tens of thousands of dollars. Act now, and this new model could save you money on your move, lower your interest rate, or cover your closing costs. Visit BundleSelect.com. That's BundleSelect.com. The estimated minimum savings are based on a comparison with the national average. Individual results may vary, and the estimated savings are not guaranteed. Bundle Select Inc. is a licensed real estate broker. California Bureau of Real Estate Broker. License number 0046902. Welcome to Real Estate Radio Live an informative and engaging podcast discussing everything you need to know about the world of real estate. Your host, Joe Kachera, provides you with insight and guidance on how to buy, sell, finance, and invest in real estate. He also offers real estate tax management strategies, new construction advice, home improvement tips, and much, much more. And now, to guide you around the world of real estate, Here's your host and Real Estate Radio Live team leader, Joe Kachera. All right, let's get going. This is Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live in studio here on a Friday with Jack Russo. Jack, good to have you back. Well, I want to apologize for being <laughs> late. I think there's a there's a traffic jam or parking lot on well, 101. We were just talking a little bit about that. We don't want to get sidetracked, but that's kind of uh, this, this Bay Area. We're going to talk a little bit about the evolution and you have some charts to show us. You right. won't, obviously won't be able to see them on our podcast, but right. we will have them on the website posted eventually. Right, and I'll have to break into three or four. I was okay. lucky enough to have, and this just shows you power of Silicon Valley, right. is you meet so many people, and I met and have met so many people that have introduced me to so many people, and then one who walked in was a student uh-huh. of a professor, a doctor, Doug Engelbard, who is actually a fairly famous guy. He's the original inventor of the mouse and the graphical oh, that user right? interface okay. that's on all Macintosh and all Windows machines. Uh-huh. Of course, he didn't make the millions or right. billions that others did. <laughs> right. So they did a graphical display. I'll put it up because I actually I kind of print it out. Yeah, so for those so, that are <laughs> seeing this on Facebook Live, you'll yeah. be able to take a quick peek. But those that are listening to this on the podcast, give us a couple of days or a week, and you want to go to Jack's website. It's uh, computerlaw.com, right? right? Is that right. computer we'll law? Put, we'll put it up there. Yeah. I'll, I'll walk it forward <laughs> on the camera. Just there you go. I like it. a huge chart yeah. of the last hundred years uh-huh. of the development of technology in Silicon Valley and beyond, but right. really focused on Silicon Valley. And, you know, I'm not saying it all originated from Dr. Engelbart, nor uh-huh. am I saying that it originated from people around him. But he did have a view of what's playing out, right. which is collective IQ, a collective intelligence, mm-hmm. is making its way to the Internet, mm-hmm. almost like a global brain. Mm-hmm. And he argues that it starts, well, of course, with his birthday, but you know, <laughs> we know it started before right. then. But it did start with the view of a shift from... And you can see this a shift from an agricultural age to okay. an industrial age, to an industrial. 1920s yep. to the 1930s. The industrial age, and we won't read all of this, but just generally, the industrial age shifts to the information age. Mm-hmm. We're beyond the information age. The information age really was sort of when did the infor- was that the like early the late 60s? 50s, early okay. 60s. Yeah, you think right. of JFK yep. and the whiz kids okay. and that sort of thing. And then we go into, from the information age, we go into the knowledge age in the late 70s and early 80s. And -hmm. the knowledge age really is about personal computers becoming part of every human's Mm -hmm. attachment. And now we're going from that to what's called the conceptual age. Mm. Conceptual age is ideas take on more value much faster. So you have an idea, right. you do, you started a business, mm-hmm. you're a founder of a business, you talk about a bundle of select. That was your idea. Right. You originated an idea, then you acted on it mm-hmm. quickly to assemble capital, assemble teams, get people to study the market, put the time in. And all of a sudden you've got a product that you're feeding into that global mm-hmm. brain. 
And the reason I put this up and I brought it and we're going to put it up and we'll get extra copies. You can put it up and we'll put the electronic version. And it's all openly licensed because the person behind it, I'll just give her a plug. Her name, she does this company called Visual Insight. Okay. There's a footnote to her. She essentially created a team. Her name is Eileen Clegg Mm -hmm. with Valerie Landau. These are two students of Engelbart who created a team whose argument is when people meet, they should have a visual whiteboard electronically in front of them. So as they talk, they can build a mosaic. Everything's just stored, right? And then it's stored, and then you remember it. Now, people use whiteboards, which are clumsy. Some of them use tablets, which are okay. We haven't gotten yet. They think they're going to be able to automate even conversations like this so that as you and I talk... Mm -hmm. Up on the chart, up on the screen behind us, are some of the visuals that That automatically get pulled. AI pulls them. So it leads to a denser conversation because we're going to talk about something dense, pretty dense in a moment, (laughs) which, of course, it's it's birthday. Actually, it's gestation and conception and birth are happening all at the same time today in Europe, but it's already had an impact in the U.S., called the GDPR, yeah, so the General uh, Data Protection So we're going to switch gears, and we're going to get into our topic now, which is the GDPR. And some of you may wonder, looking at that, but Jack's going to talk about it and explain it. Before we jump into that and get started with Jack, just a reminder, people want to contact you. What's the best place, law firm, phone number, right. website? Right. It's, I'm the managing partner of Computer Law Group. We're in Palo Alto, California, downtown Palo Alto, a block from the iconic Apple store. We're, we've been there forever. It's our building. We believe in Silicon Valley. We Our practice is centered around Silicon Valley. And we you can reach me probably fastest by email, jack okay. at computerlaw.com, or the phone number is 650-327-9800. Great. So what we're going to do today, this is really important for those listening to obviously watching it later, Facebook feed, but the podcast If you haven't seen it by now, when you listen to this podcast, you've seen it all over Facebook, television, online, newspapers, and that is GDPR, big, big, big deal for many different reasons. Jack, if you could first give us the, you know, the what does that mean and this kind of overall description, and then I want to talk to you a little bit about what does it mean for personal, so Mm -hmm. you and I as a consumer, what does it mean for us, and then what does it mean for companies, because it really affects both, right? Correct. Yeah. So... Let's just put it in context. Yeah. I, I like to say there's three reasons most people come to eventually come to lawyers, mm-hmm. right? One is they've been sued. That's awful, but you need someone to defend you. I get calls about that all the time. Someone has taken advantage of you, you're, you perceive they have, so you want to sue them or you okay. want to get a resolution with them. That's plaintiff work. The opposite was defendant work. We see a lot of those cases, too. Or you just want some advice about a change in the law that may affect you. So Mm -hmm. GDPR is in that last category, which is it is a major legislative effort in the European Union. So most Mm -hmm. people stop me right there and say, we're not in the European Union. Why are you bothering with this? I know May 25th was a big day about to end in Mm -hmm. the European Union because they're nine or ten hours ahead of us there most of the time. Why are you telling us? Well, it turns out that anyone that is reaching any consumer in the European Union Mm -hmm. is subject to this law. So when you have a website or an app or an online business collecting data from people in any of the 27 countries in the European Union, Mm -hmm. you are subject to this regulation and can Mm -hmm. be fined up to $20 million. Wow. So that's a lot for a small company. And so we have lots of clients coming to us and saying, what do I do? How do I comply? How do, what steps do I take? Do I have to worry about this? And so everyone as an individual has probably seen these notices saying, Hey, we've updated our policies. Mm -hmm. They're getting barraged with it. There was a Wall Street Journal article published just a week or two ago where people were saying, Some people are using much longer documents. Some are using shorter documents. But GDPR, the General Data Protection Regulation, that's what that four-letter acronym means. The three-letter acronyms we've probably run out of, right? So now (laughs) we're in the domain name. (laughs) Exactly. Now we're in the four-letter acronyms. We're in the where it's got to be four letters. And what I think of it as is 
you may remember many years ago, there was a standard called the ISO 9000 oh, yeah. series standards. Mm-hmm. That is a international standard organization, three-letter acronym, because it's an organization that's existed for a long time, ISO, was trying to get people to document what they were doing to assure quality. Mm -hmm. Well, we all know quality is a very gray area. What's gold for someone may be Very subjective. Very subjective. But they believe that by organizing a set of principles around how you carry out a deliverable of an experience, which is what a service is. Some people wouldn't say a product is an experience. Driving in a Tesla is an experience. Mm -hmm. That that experience, you can rate that quality by keeping track of what your customers say and do. Mm. Some people do that with surveys. Other people do that by phoning them up. There's lots of ways to do it. Well, think of it as the GDPR is trying to put an ISO type Mm. standard on (laughs) privacy rights. Privacy. So what they've done, in effect, is they've said, we want our citizens throughout the entire European Union to be protected by real privacy standards. And the kicker to the story that surprises everyone is the way it usually works in Europe is there's a lot of people having a lot of meetings, and then they like to say they have a lot of great lunches and dinners, and there's a lot of wine, and they talk about a lot of things, and they don't get anything done. (laughs) They just talk, 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 don't get anything done, right? This legislation was done with immediate effect on the date that they chose, which is today, May 25th, 2018, without the individual separate 27 states having to vote. Wow. So it was like a federal law that comes in. It's like, whack, it's going to happen, yeah. and you can't do anything about it. So if you're Italy and you say, ah, we don't really like this, or you're French, if I could have a French accent, oh, we don't like <laughs> if I could do that, that doesn't work because, in effect, it is the... European Union as a union saying all of our citizens, regardless of how they feel. Interestingly, even though the UK is leaving the union, they've adopted and think it's a good idea. So this is a standard that whether you like it or not. And and here's the way this is playing out. Mm -hmm. The Facebook scandal, and there are lots of others Mm -hmm. besides Facebook, so we don't have to pick them out, but that's the most recent. It has generated a view that what the EU has done should be adopted wholesale in the U.S. Mm. So the specifics on what this means is if you're a corporation, then we'll deal with the consumer. If you're a corporation, you have to appoint someone as your DPO, your data protection officer. So you as the CEO, wow. yeah, it's like, look at that. When the hell another is board it, member. Exactly. Another. <laughs> when, when is it that some government entity can tell you how you organize your business? Yeah. When I, wait, That's like unheard of. God, next they're going to tell me that I got to, like, you know, wear a tie. Right. I mean, literally. But they say you need to have a designation and will default that if you're the CEO uh-huh. and you have no one else, you're the DPO. You're the, uh, You're the guy because the buck stops with you. Now, Mm -hmm. if you want to delegate it, then the DPO has to have specific authorization at an ethical level to assure compliance. So think of this as a compliance officer Mm -hmm. inside a business. I mean, think about this from the point of view. A lot of businesses are like, we don't even have a compliance officer for anything. We don't have a compliance officer for any of the other stuff Mm -hmm. we do. Well, now you have to have a data protection officer, a DPO, and that person is going to have to learn the statute. Mm-hmm. So it's Full Employment Act for lawyer training right. DPOs. Right. That's step one. And that person is actually going to have to do stuff that previously we never thought of governments, because you could say all 27 countries are governments, but it's really like a super government, mm-hmm. the u- union, like right. the federal government here in the U.S., <clears throat> is saying – you have to make sure that there is security against hackers and that there's privacy of consumer data. Mm-hmm. So you have to take specific steps, and then they lay out in like 15 different ways how the DPO has to implement the requirements of the mm-hmm. statute. Okay. So this is a little bit <clears throat> like Big Brother, if you want to call them that, saying, Consumers are at too much risk. We don't want to see what happened with the Facebook Mm -hmm. Cambridge Analytica scandal replayed. Had that happened today or the next day, 
Facebook might and probably still will be facing the right. consequences. So think of it as they're saying this is a real privacy statute. It's a real security statute. It's also a data statute that mm -hmm. is suggestive of we all each own our data. Mm -hmm. So before you can claim ownership in the data of an individual, you have to make an actual bargain for exchange. Boy. Think about that because wow. it may not be as simple as yeah. the end user agreements that right. people are saying. So there are lawsuits filed today already, Boy. both in Europe and in the U.S., that are taking the view that there's been violations of this. So we're going to see some interesting yeah. questions of law okay. about does a foreign statute make its way into the U.S. courts. Mm. So the corporations are taking heed. Apple has done a lot of changes. They, in fact, now let you go to a place where if you want to see all the data they have on you, yeah. you can see everything. You can see how many times you downloaded a picture, uploaded a picture, what movies you're watching. You can see all wow. that. And you can say to them, I want all that erased. <laughs> yeah, I want the right amazing. to discontinue that. That is something else. Well, let's, we're going to do this. We're going to take a quick break, and uh, we're going to come back, continue the conversation, because it's a good one, and everybody needs to... Try to understand it. Jack's covering the corporate side right now. We'll finish up when we come back, and then we'll dive into the more of the consumer side, how it's going to affect you. This is Joe Kachar with Real Estate Radio Live, sitting alongside Jack Russo. We'll be back to continue in just a minute. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Getting ready to buy or sell a home in 30, 60, or 90 days? Then check out BundleSelect.com to find out how you could save 20% or more on your entire transaction. Save on real estate, lending, and title. With BundleSelect.com, technology and a personal concierge are at your service to save you time and money. Bundle Select's hand-picked team of experts will compete for your business, so you'll save thousands of dollars by bundling all of these services. BundleSelect.com gives you all the control, including using your own realtor. I'm Joe Kachera with Real Estate Radio Live, and I have been on the radio educating consumers for years. By bundling services like real estate, lending, and title, you could save tens of thousands of dollars. Act now, and this new model could save you money on your move, lower your interest rate, or cover your closing costs. Visit BundleSelect.com. That's BundleSelect.com. The estimated minimum savings are based on a comparison with the national average. Individual results may vary, and the estimated savings are not guaranteed. Bundle Select Inc. is a licensed real estate broker. California Bureau of Real Estate Broker. License number 00466902. Welcome back to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's topic or guests, just visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Again, your host for today's edition of Real Estate Radio Live, Joe Kuchera. All right, welcome back in. Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live. It is Friday afternoon, sitting in studio with Jack Russo is here. We usually try to get together once a week, depending on schedules. We normally discuss topics of entrepreneurship, startups, what's happening in Silicon Valley. Jack is the managing partner for the Computer Law Group in Palo Alto. Real quickly before we jump back into GDPR, yeah. Jack... Remind those of what work your law firm does and who you might represent in terms of people that may want to uh, use you guys or work with you guys. Right. We represent plaintiffs in lawsuits. We represent defendants in lawsuits. Okay. We have kind of a major litigation practice that does both sides of the street. We're not, you know, we're, we're open to the justice of the cause, whatever way that is. Mm -hmm. And we do early, early entrepreneurship. We like to say we see people sometimes as their barely getting mm -hmm. out of the garage. They right. might still be in the garage. Saw a guy this morning still clearly in the garage with a big idea. And the big question, of course, is can he get out of the garage? And mm -hmm. what does it mean to get out of the garage? I won't tell you the name yet for his company or anything <laughs> about it, but we were all laughing like, you can't use that name. You can't use that name. I'll tell you the name maybe <laughs> offline. You'll crack up when I tell you the, the name. But anyway, getting back to the subject at hand, GDPR, this is advice that you have to give to people who don't want to get sued by a right. government or by a class action lawyer, mm -hmm. because that's the risk. If you make a mistake and don't follow these rules, you may get, in the absolute worst case, stopped at an airport. I said this to some clients who were saying, ah, it's not going to affect us. I said, well, you're going to fly into Germany 
and all of a sudden they're going to stop you at the airport and say, well, you know, there's a warrant for your arrest for violating. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm being extreme yeah. here. But it happens that, you know, civil actions get filed all over the world. Mm-hmm. You may get an email or a notice about it, and you may say, I could ignore it. It's just some nut in Germany that sued me. And all right. of a sudden you enter Germany, and you get pulled aside because you're on the the border control Mm -hmm. and they're saying stop this person because he needs to pay a judgment for twenty million dollars i'm not saying that's going to happen and i'm not trying to sort of scare people but in general the global nature of the internet is creating a global practice of law Mm -hmm. and with the global practice of law particularly if you do what we do which is a lot of internet-based startups Mm -hmm. you have to be able to keep track of and give advice about how to comply with statutes like the GDPR. Mm. And with it, you have to give some advice about how to do it so it's not so expensive, it's not so risky, it's not such a hassle. And that's really part of what we do. And, of course, we try to be aware of everything that's happening because it's a lot more than this that's happening. We have a lot of stuff happening with blockchain and cryptocurrency and a huge number of other topics. But this is a big topic today. uh, So this mean, Jack, I mean, in simple terms, that every single company – Online companies does any kind of business information online has to take a new look at exactly what their policies are and not only their policies but they have to look at what their internal practices are. Okay. So think of it like the best analogy I can think of is someone says to you, "Look, you really should review your life insurance like, okay. or your family estate right. plan or all the things we never get around to doing and we don't care much about because we feel like we're still young. Right. We're not on a deathbed. We're not worried about it. And then they say, we're going to appoint someone in your family as a compliance officer <laughs> to make sure you do it. <laughs> I mean, that's an extreme yeah. analogy, but yeah. in a way, it's a statement that says, and if you have not documented internally mm-hmm. that we have a checklist that we've followed to make sure that we are actually in compliance, then Mm -hmm. when an audit occurs, if an audit were to occur, or if a lawsuit were Mm -hmm. to occur, they would throw the book at you saying you never took this seriously. Mm. So there's an aspect of this that's sort of soft in the sense of they want to give people a chance to comply. So they announced this statute like over a year ago, and they said, look, you know, we're going to be nice or gentle initially, Mm -hmm. But as people start to show that they really didn't care, mm-hmm. particularly bigger companies, because they can make bigger examples right. of them. So my prediction is they'll probably give people, you know, six months. But by the end of this year, the beginning of next year, we're going to see a lot more enforcement activity. And the big fish are obviously the ones that right. big governments go right. after first. So Facebook is already on the radar and has already announced to the European Union that they're not paying any fines from the Cambridge Analytica mm-hmm. scandal, well, you know what that means. They're going to probably get a much tougher review on mm-hmm. their GDPR review. Does all this stuff, uh, one of the things that comes to mind, and I don't know, I mean, asking you, does all this stuff give people pause, you think, every once in a while? Of You know, we're on this fast train of technology life, and we're loving everything. We're talking technology. We're getting voiceover AI and all this. But does it every once in a while put the brakes on a bit and have people pumping the brakes going, I'm not sure if I want what people are talking about Well, there are people that welcome the GDPR, and this is a good segue to the consumer side, which is they want to make sure that they can control and maybe even erase their data. Mm -hmm. So we've had analogous legislation in the U.S. dealing with how creditors' rights companies, companies that collect credit data, manage that data. There's an analogy there, which is you have the right to check your file. You have the right to make corrections to your file. There's a whole but federal... That's a train wreck, re- It's a train wreck. That, cr- a fe- that credit fe- reporting bureau? It's, oh, a federal, it's a federal regime yeah. that has not yet gotten to a level right. of quality it should. I agree with you. But the analogy is there, which was okay. we want to make sure there's accurate data so people don't get discriminated against the loan when, in fact, they have a better credit history than mm-hmm. what's being reported. And mistakes are made. Right. So... In the European Union, they're taking the view, and a lot of people are welcoming it, that some people do want to unplug. And there are people who have written books about, you want to know, it's pretty hard to unplug. They've actually tried, and it's taken them months Mm -hmm. to completely disconnect. No email, no cell phone, no this. Like, literally, they want to have no connection. They want their privacy back. I mean, look, there are some people I know that literally buy land in Montana and Wyoming. I mean, thousands of acres. 
And they're like, you're never going to find me. I'm going to be in a certain place, and I want my total privacy, and I want to do my artwork, I want to do my painting, and I'm not even going to show it. I want it for myself. And, of course, we call those Sounds pretty good, except rarely anyway. I don't know if I could do that (laughs) full-time. We we call those people unabombers from time to time. But but as a general proposition, there are certainly people that want to unplug. And I know there are people, and I've said this before, and I get calls from them all the time, they're like, we're moving. We're moving from California. We may even be moving from the United States because we think the velocity of change <coughs> has become mm-hmm. so intense that we just can't keep up with it. Mm-hmm. So I'm not here to make that argument or that theme, but I'm here to say as a general proposition, when you're an individual, you have rights. Mm-hmm. You have rights in Europe now that are arguably greater than your rights in the U.S., but your rights in Europe will affect all the U.S. companies because they'll not necessarily want to discriminate. I mean, mm-hmm. how do you easily do that? You have the same user, more or less the same screen. What are you going to mm-hmm. say? Well, you're from Europe. I'm going to do things different. So Facebook has already said we're going to follow the GDPR. Right. The GDPR will probably become the gold standard because okay. the U.S. is so slow and our legislative process is so fractured that probably they'll just end up saying, okay, if it was good for Europe, it was good for us. Mm-hmm. Although there'll be a lot of debate about it. Right. There'll be a lot of people saying, eh, I don't think I want to do that. Right. And then ultimately the question will be, what rights will individuals have to pursue companies that don't respect these data collection rules and mm-hmm. data retention <coughs> and disposal? Because you're supposed to actually – Get rid of data that is not relevant to the particular reason that the customer is on your account. So mm-hmm. take, for example, a transaction for, you know, a six pack of soda or something from right. Amazon. Or most recently, my wife won't like hearing this, but I bought from Amazon. I don't know why I did this, but they sell a six pack of sardines and it was at a low, it was at a low price. I just wanted to see what, what would happen because they deliver it pretty quickly. Yeah. And it's, it's like half the price of mm-hmm. Safeway. And I happen to think these are really beautiful, expensive sardines. And if you buy them at half the price, you at least don't feel like you get yeah. clobbered. And they're good for you. And too, they're by good the way. for you. And yeah. you know, actually if you're doing work, <laughs> just, just FYI, if you're working late at night and you need that charge of protein and that charge of kind of, of brain food, if you have one of those cans of sardines, I know it might feel like you're in the army, you're opening up right. pay rations, you have a can of those sardines and you eat them, I'll tell you, within 15 minutes, man, you're really? recharged. You are totally recharged, particularly if you have, like, you know, a shot yeah. of whiskey to follow or something. <laughs> when you have that good. and it arrives, when that transaction is done, yeah. Amazon should get rid of that data. Now, currently, Amazon keeps that data. Right. Because they want to know, oh, sure. Jack likes sardines, and he likes intellectual books, right. and he likes intellectual movies, and they're keeping And every program. time you log on, all that stuff pops up around you. Exactly. Right? So now the right. question is, will the GDPR force a negotiated exchange between for money mm-hmm. or maybe even a cryptocurrency mm-hmm. between me and Amazon of the future that has to apply with the U.S. version of GDPR, which mm-hmm. will come sooner or later in some form, right. to say, we will pay you to allow us to retain that data. So you mm. can almost view GDPR as setting up a future economy. Because wow. it's putting back in your hands as the consumer your data. And you could say to Amazon, no, I don't want you to have that data. Yeah. I don't want to have a profile on Amazon. I just want to buy some sardines. Yeah. I just want to have <laughs> sardines. I don't want to be told yeah. that in addition right. to sardines, I might like the... Um, uh, other fish products, right. the tuna fish that you have. I don't want any other fish following me online. Exactly. So we got a couple minutes left. How do you want to wrap this up? What would you, I mean, this is a big, big topic. We should probably do a right. follow-up in the next couple of weeks. Well, I have a little booklet that we've prepared that tells more about me okay. and tells about the GDPR. I can certainly provide it to That'd anyone who calls yeah. in. I'm going to put up on the website the visual okay. from Visual Insight that tells the story in one big visual, mm-hmm. 100 years of innovation yeah. in America with a focus on Silicon Valley. Mm-hmm. And for those who want some GDPR advice, we have some videos, we have some audios. We're going to post them on our website. We also have some good short summaries of what to do, what mm-hmm. not to do. And, of course, you know, if you get sued, give us a call. If you think you've been wronged, <laughs> give us a call. Yeah. 
or if we can give you some advice and help you think this through, because it's not typically just let's tweak a few no, terms and conditions. Right. you got to actually it's start thinking. Makeover. It's like, what are yeah. you doing to make sure if an auditor came or you were asked, oh, yeah, we took it seriously, we spent some time, maybe you have a, a board meeting or two, maybe you sit down. There are people outsourcing this. Literally, there are people for a fee mm-hmm. that are coming in kind of like with a regularly scheduled audit. I think that might be overkill. That mm-hmm. may be necessary yeah. eventually. That may be where audit firms go in the future maybe. as part of an audit, Yeah, as part of a financial audit. <laughs> right. That becomes an add-on right. service. That could happen. Yeah. All right, we're going to have to wrap things up. Jack, thanks, as You're usual, welcome. for showing up. We'll uh, try to do it I'm again. I'm going to leave you this visual to yeah. put up on the wall, but you got to put it up on I'm the wall. I'm going to leave it up there the permanently. Next, the next time I'm here, i got to see it because <laughs> that's a pretty valuable piece of art, now, Next in my time we opinion. do it, well, I'm going to scan the camera over, yeah. and we'll uh, we'll show everybody as right. we're doing the show that. Right. And uh, we'll also give them an opportunity. Jack is going to post it on his website as well. Right. Again, for those that uh, want more information during the week, reradiolive.com. You can contact me, 408-838-9060. If you go to our website, Jack and his firm is permanently on there as well if you look under legal services. This is Joe Kuchera with Real Estate Radio Live. Thanks again for tuning in today. We'll be back with you next time. Take care. You've been listening to Real Estate Radio Live. For more information on today's program, visit reradiolive.com. That's reradiolive.com. Subscribe to our podcast. Discover more at reradiolive.com.